In this video, I'll take you through step-by-step -step how to install SQL Server 2012. Now for this version of SQL Server, you need to have .NET Framework 4.0. If you don't have it already, that's okay because the SQL install will check for it and install it for you. So we could go ahead and just run setup. And similar to SQL Server 2008, SQL 2012 also uses the SQL Server Installation Center. So we could go straight to Installation, and we want to select the first option, New SQL Server Standalone Installation. Now before it could actually begin the install, the setup will run a check to see what's required on the machine. And if you're missing anything, it will go ahead and install it for you. So make sure that first your setup support rules pass. And the next thing it's going to do is it will install those setup support files that you need in order to install SQL Server. It'll first check for any product updates for our SQL Server. Nothing was found, so we could click Next. And now it's going to install those prerequisite setup files. And this includes the .NET Framework 4.0, if you don't have that installed already. It's going to run through its check and make sure that you don't have any failures. Go ahead and click Next. In here, you could enter in your product code or select Evaluation if you're doing this on a test machine and click Next. Select the box to accept licensing terms and click Next. And we want to choose the first option. We're doing the SQL Server feature installation. Now here on the feature selection is where you'll select the features that you want to install. So for SQL Server, you'll definitely want to select the database engine. This is your actual SQL Server. You also want to select your management tools. This is the GUI that will help you manage your SQL Server, as well as select the client connectivity tool. And you also want to select the documentation components. This is the SQL Server Books Online, and it's a great reference document. Make sure that you get no failures under installation rules and click next under instance configuration here you can specify whether you want to install a default instance or a name instance so for default you can only have that one default instance per machine but you could have multiple name instances I'm gonna just select default instance and click next Click Next on this space requirements. Now here under server configuration, you could specify the login you want to use, the account you want to use to run each of these SQL services. Now since this is just a test machine, I'm going to leave it as the default, the NT service. But if this was a production environment, you certainly want to create a domain account to run each of these services and best practices is to have a different domain account for each one of these services. 
I'm gonna click next. Here under authentication mode, we have two options, the Windows authentication as well as Mixmo authentication. Now for Windows authentication, what it will do is pass through your Windows credentials uh, from your Windows domain or your local system. For mix mode, this is a combination of your Windows authentication and it also gives you the ability to create SQL users. So I'm gonna choose mix mode and enter in a password for the SA account, which is a system admin account for a SQL Server. And I'm also going to add myself as a administrator. Click next. And click next again. It runs through one more check to make sure that you don't have any failures. And that you're ready to install. And now it's ready to install. And it'll give you a summary of all the options that you selected for this installation. And these options, they're also saved in this configuration file, the INI. And this configuration INI file, it comes in handy when you have to install SQL Server on several machines. You could just run setup.exe and point it to this configuration file and it'll run the setup for you. You don't have to go through this wizard this step by step and select your options again. Everything is saved in this configuration file. So we could click install and it will begin installing SQL 2012. And this install also, like previous versions, it takes approximately 10 to 20 minutes to install. So I'll pause the video and I will return once this is finished. So the install is now completed and we see that the components install successfully. So we close out of the setup and close out of the installation center. And now we can test our SQL Server by launching the Management Studio. And to do that, go to your Start and go into SQL Server 2012. And we want to open the SQL Server Management Studio. The server name for your SQL Server, since we installed a default instance, the server name will be the same name as your Windows Server. So in my case, it's Win7VM1. And we see that we connected successfully. And no, currently no user databases. Uh, we have a few system databases, but the connection is successful, and now we see our SQL Super 2012 installation is complete.